My name is Lisa Tringali, and I like having a name that's easily pronounced, but very easily mispronounced when you read it, T-R-I-N-G-A-L-I. So when I get phone calls and people say, yes, can I speak to Lisa Tringley, 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 it's I'll great. I'll call Yeah, Tortellini. I, I love that involved. because either it's somebody that I owe money to or somebody that wants me to owe them money. <laughs> either way, I don't need to take, you know, talk to them. So it's kind of like a screening system. Now, I went into the military. My maiden name was Moro. So having a name like that, I went through hell in school. Hey, moron, you know, and then you start dating and it's moron, moron. It's like you just can't get away from it. So ladies, you know about the name game? You know, when you're interested in somebody, you put the last name with yours to see if it sounds good? Well, I was dating a guy named Benoit, and I said, this is no good. This sounds like a pig in heat. Benoit, Benoit, Benoit. I uh, can't go there. I dated a guy that his last name was Cotto, and I'm like, okay, Lisa Cotto Cold. And I dated a guy named Gallant, and I says, oh, Lisa Gallant, $99 a month. I said, I can't get away from this. So I said, Lisa Tringelli, that sounds good. Well, come to find out, Tringelli is a long word for La Tringa in Spanish, which means horse's dick. So I got screwed there, yeah. But uh, I don't worry about last names anymore. I'm single by choice. Nobody chooses to be with me. And uh, it's okay because I'm getting older. When I was dating, uh, one of the things I would do is take my date to the gym. That's the best thing to do if you're ever thinking about sleeping with somebody. You take him to the gym, I'm on the treadmill, and I'm watching him clear across the room, and he's moving the weights. And I wanted to see his stamina, his longevity, and if he sweats. And this guy went over there, and he lifted the weights a couple of times, stood there, and sweats pouring off him. Needless to say, I didn't sleep with the guy because that's not going to work. I don't want some fat slug who has no stamina at all sweating all over me. Plus, I'm so full of aches and pains. I'm so full of aches and pains that I don't know when ooh and ah meant something felt good. It's been a long time, and I'm not about ready to be somebody's jungle gym. And, uh, I mean, I got really depressed being full of aches and pains. I broke a femur in two places. I had two back surgeries. And prior to that, I went to the gym. I wanted to get into shape. And getting older, the uh, instructor says to me, well, what do you want to work on first? And I said, well, I like to work on getting my ass off the back of my knees. That's where I'd like to start. Um, I have absolutely no ass. It did slide down my legs. I got this little thing. I think that's my ass. Um, at least it looks like it is in my bathing suit. Well, ironically, I went and had back surgery, and they went through my stomach. Now I have an ass. It's on my stomach. I needed to rotate that shit around. Yeah, but, um, you know, uh, getting older, having broken bones, and being diabetic, it's been kind of tough on me. Um, I got really depressed. I decided to end it all. So I made an appointment with uh, one of the associates to Jack Kevorkian, you know, the suicide assist doctor. Well, now I'm suing him for malpractice, but at least I have something to live for. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Part of the problem with being diabetic is you never think about things like where you're going to place tattoos. Uh, I got one on my chest. I have one on my back. Those are safe because, you know, diabetics lose limbs. Well, I have one on my ankle, and I'm a little worried about that one because, like I said, diabetics lose limbs, and I just hate wasting money like that. It's just too much money to waste. And my daughter's always trying to get me to get something tattooed, something pierced. I'm 46 years old, and I went out a couple months ago and got a tragus piercing. Like, I need a hole in my head. I have enough holes in my head. But um, the funny thing about being single is you end up dating some pretty strange guys. I dated one guy that would pet me all night long. I said, oh my God, if I put my hair down, he's going to ride me like a pony. That scared the hell out of me. Then I have one guy that took me on a nice date, and we're dancing on the dance floor. And then he just stops moving. And he says, you know, I'm still paying for my ex-wife's breast implants. I said, I'm sick, and I need to go home. Very bad dates. I had one date that showed up at the door, and I says, wrong house. 
felt bad for this one. But he, he looked like Bruce Lee Adams on a really bad day, which Bruce Lee Adams doesn't look too good to start with, but on a bad day, it was really awesome. But um, I did date a guy that lived in his car, and I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not he was homeless. Because he chose to live in his car, I mean, he saved a lot of money, and he was able to take me to the best places because he wasn't paying anything in rent. Then he told me he was saving up for a bigger place. I just wish he was a little clearer when he said he wanted a Hummer. <laughs> Ironically enough, I broke up with him, and um, now he's living in Arizona driving an 18-wheeler, so I guess he did get a bigger place. But it was kind of hard dating a guy that lives out of his car, because after the date's over, how do you send him home? Thank you for dinner, Mike. Don't know where you're going, but you're not staying here. And I woke up the next morning and I found him parked out in front of my house. And he stayed there for like a week. I said, oh my God, you know, what is gonna happen here? And I told him, you know, Mike, really, uh, you need to move on, you're a nice guy, but I really like you to have a place of your own other than my front yard. And uh, he's still stuck around. And uh, eventually, you know, I called the police and had him check it out. And he took his side view mirror and he converted it into a little fold out mailbox and it had the half sign on it. So no matter where he we went, he always had an address. He just like tagged on to what the address was at the house, like 31 and a half, 51 and a half. The police said, well, now it's a housing issue because he's taken up residence. He's receiving mail. I said, oh my God, this is not good. I says, Mike, you know what? You really need to move on. Um, I really have to do something here. And he finally got the hint. The next morning, I found that he had moved on. And I started feeling really sad and really lonely about this because he really wasn't a bad guy. And I decided, gee, you know what? I I'd like to see him again, but the bastard kept moving. <laughs> yeah, so I guess Mike's doing all right now. And, and uh, Jackass has just recently come back in the picture. You all remember my Jackass, AKA Mark. Yeah, um, he was a wonderful guy. You know, uh, he was the type of guy that um, when you lock the bathroom door because you want some privacy, he would pop the lock as if it's just not there, just kind of a deterrent to slow him down before he came in. I got even with him one day. We had a house party. And at the back, if you can see how the bathroom was set up, there's two full sinks, a toilet, and a shower. So it's a long hallway. Popped the lock while he was on the can. Couldn't close that door. I was a little bit upset. That was kind of funny. Yeah. But, um, you know, getting back to getting older, um, it's, it's kind of tough. Uh, I've seen some stories in the media. A couple of years ago, I guess it was out west. You guys might have even heard about this. This guy had a flagellants problem at the bar. And he got really upset because the people he was with were really razzing him. He got so mad, he left the bar, got a knife, came back and stabbed the guy to death. And being twisted that I am, I thought, gee, that would be a great Beano commercial. You know, Beano now and there'll be no killing later. I said, gee, that would be good. Yeah. So, um, dating has not been easy. There's still not a lot of weirdos out there. I'm the weirdest one. And uh, so I think I might have met my match sometimes. Um, the guy that wants to pet you like a dog and... I don't know, there's just too many weirdos out there. But I'll tell you what, I had a boyfriend that would pick on me about my weight. And I got really depressed about it. And finally I lost 185 pounds, I got rid of him. <laughs> yeah, it was the best diet I've ever been on. Uh, well, I want to thank you all for your time. I hope you enjoy your evening. And I'm going to give you back to our headline.